Hey everybody, just a quick heads up before the episode starts proper to uh, set your expectations. We had a little bit of an audio snafu towards the end of this recording. So unfortunately, while the majority of the episode is absolutely fine, uh, the last 15 minutes or so, the audio quality due to our Skype connection drops a little bit. So we get a little bit robot-y. Audio quality should still be mostly fine, but uh, just letting you know ahead of time. Uh, Otherwise, thanks for listening and hope you enjoy the show. This episode of the Party Loaded Podcast is proudly sponsored by Audible.com. Check out their awesome catalogue of audiobooks with over 180,000 titles to choose from. And be sure to grab a free audiobook on us and support the show by visiting audibletrial.com slash endgame. Let's party. Well, hello and a very merry pre-Christmas to everybody. Welcome back to Party Loaded. This is episode four. Uh, I'm Luke Retellick and um, I'm here to chat about video games with uh, a bunch of friends. And those friends number first returning after a week off, we have Jam. How you doing? Hola, good. Have you recovered from your mass eatings? Yes, you it have? was delicious. You, it was delicious. <laughs> Did you actually think to share anything with any of us? No. All right, well, then I'll move no, on to the next person I actually care about. Bring back fun to share with the rest of the class. That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we I ha- did a bad. <laughs> uh, Imogen's here, of course. Hello. Cool. And uh, you're calling from the other side of the country tonight. You're actually I over am. in Sydney. I am. So that's dedication. I'm like, Jamie, <laughs> just takes a very late here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like local and everything and just couldn't back. So I was... <laughs> Nice. Well, I'd be impressed if you were doing the whole uh, gaming thing over there, but it's just boring old work, isn't it? So It is boring old work, but yeah. it's a necessity, so I can continue to play games. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Ollie is here as well. How you doing, man? Hello. I'm all right. So, uh, I was uh, just playing games. Yeah, I was just going to say, have you minimised Battlefront again? Are you, you sort of winning off no, the No, no, no. I just closed Fallout 4. Okay. <laughs> nice. How, do, how does uh, Tony Stark of the Wasteland fare this week? Uh, I've just discovered the Institute. Ooh, and I'm deciding ooh. who I want to stuff over. Right. Ooh. Some of the factional decision-making. Mm. Interesting. I'm yet to encounter a bunch of that. That is cool. So, um, yeah, we, we uh, don't have long now until um, the big uh, Christmas thing happens. And I think by the sounds of it, we've all kind of started doing a lot of the, the social stuff that's going to see us uh, eating and drinking and being merry and uh, feeling way too full and sorry for ourselves. So um, <laughs> we, did you say you're out at dinner tonight, Imogen? Is that how yeah, you're... I was out at dinner tonight and it was great. And I have regret. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and I have days to make up for it in other eating. <laughs> nice. Has everyone done their shopping? Anyone got any uh, gamey stuff that you're buying for, for friends or relatives? I am uh, so far behind in shopping. I am behind. <laughs> I'm thinking Hopefully. of just like mass purchasing Halo 5 for all my uh, immediate rallies so we can play. Play together. <laughs> yeah. It's actually I think that'd be good. It's a good plan. For, for Wait, Amazon. shit. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Clearly thought that one through. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jamie, it's Santa that brings the presents. At Santa. Christmas. Yeah. I wouldn't know what Santa's doing. That's a mystery. Yeah. Magical. <laughs> Ollie, what were you going to say? I was going to say, hopefully my missus doesn't listen because I'm getting her some retro SNES games. Ooh. Oh, cool. Awesome. That is super sweet. Are you um, eBaying it or have you found another source? I found a local shop at the markets that sells it. So I was like, oh. Sweet. So she's getting some Mario stuff and some retro SNES games. That's they awesome. Have. I remember Imogen being really excited, um, sort of coming back from PAX, wanting to, to go and get a SNES and uh, a suite of beanbags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Okay. You were pushing the beanbags when I was looking at new couches. Like, just just beanbags. Just beanbags everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it would be great for playing games. Well, it matches because the SNES Luke's so head, much better. My house is just a place that we play games at. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> And there's like a room uh, with a ball a pit. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing, but I would like, you know, something other than a beanbag. You know, I am getting on in years. <laughs> you don't want to have to make that. Yeah, beanbag. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the upright beanbags, something like that. There you go. No, but I, I did like want a to super in, did want a SNES real bad. I didn't realize quite how excited I was because we were just going to the retro game area until I heard those noises and I could not control myself. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I may have squeaked. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, so I am very jealous, and I will have to be looking out uh, my own SNES at some stage. Yeah. So it is difficult. They are difficult to find, you know, in, you know, a condition, you know, a lot of them have been painted on, et cetera, so. Yeah. No, it, it's funny. Just this time of year, it really being, brings back some of those childhood memories with, with those um, generation consoles, you know, just sort of playing, you know, and opening presents and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really good memories, good times. Good to think yeah. back on. Whereas yeah. kids so these days, hashtag kids these days, uh, get you know their Xbox Live memberships or a download code. No more games to unwrap at Christmas time. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason boxed games may still exist as a market as presents for other people. Yeah, well, I mean, this is almost a whole topic we should probably do at a later date because the whole it's true. boxed game versus digital download, I think, you know, different people have different preferences for various reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us might be a little old-fashioned still compared to, to the mainstream market, but... Uh, yeah, you guys are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Old as fuck. I'm, I'm- <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. This is this is why you need a beanbag, Imogen, because you need to have something to hold on to to feel young again. <laughs> Get those hoists just in the middle of the room to pull us up. <laughs> no, no, bean, beanbags you just roll out of. Or if you've got a younger sibling, you just launch them out of it by jumping on the other end of it. <laughs> All right, um, I'll get Jamie to launch me out of a beanbag. We'll see how that works out. That's a wicked idea. <laughs> oh, do you take that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, well, speaking of uh, games of, of launching, what what's everyone been doing this week? So uh, anything that you've launched into new? Uh, anything that you've been sort of trying to close out? Jam, you, you've sort of uh, had a, a break, so why don't we get... Yes. Catch up with you because you probably had a couple of weeks worth of, of stuff I that you've done. I have two weeks of stuff. My list is it's pretty decent. Mm. Um, a bit of fallout, not too much. Um, the Room 3, which you guys covered last week very well, I enjoyed it. I think I'm going to go back to try and get uh, a better ending. Yep. Um, but I really liked the puzzles and the feel of the game. It was fun. And I, well, I knocked it out in one day. I had Very little to do on one particular Sunday. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, Ori, after everything Imogen's been telling us, I tried Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh, my God, it's gorgeous. (laughs) Um, Life is Strange. I've knocked off episode one so far and I've been very impressed. I didn't expect, because the mechanic is it's, you know, a choice game where your choices affect things later on. This is the butterfly can, effect one that, as Ollie described. Yeah. Um, before. Yep. You can wind back time to change really recent decisions, and I thought that might, I don't know, I, I was expecting it to, to be helpful, but it actually makes some choices really difficult. You absolutely know the immediate consequence of each choice, and sometimes you have to choose between the lesser of two evils hmm. and still not know how it's going to play out down the track. Okay. So very interesting. I can't wait to, to keep going with that one. Um, Heroes of the Storm with you guys, so much fun. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. With my little Muradin dwarf and I think a little so bit of rain ore mm-hmm. I've tried. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's a game that I jump in by myself to play. But when you guys play, I'm usually pretty pretty keen. Mm. We've got quite a uh, following amassing for that at the moment, it seems. Yeah. A couple more Surprisingly. Hmm. We good. probably have enough at this stage to uh, to play all the all. Mm. Like that'll be amazing. Five v five, all with us. Yeah, and and hilarious. Yes, and yes. Free. We should sign out set that uh, up. registering up to Mumble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need some more chat rooms. Mm. Uh, I finished episode two of Minecraft Story Mode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm still not quite up to to where you are, but that was cute as well. I have one question for you with episode two. Who yes. who did you choose to go and uh, and get? The engineer. Ah, me too. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just for, um, for everyone else who doesn't sort of get that, episode two is probably one of the biggest um, uh, not on rails episodes of the Minecraft story mode because you, you have a clear direction over which one of uh, two characters you go and, and locate and it changes the episode quite a bit based on which one you choose. So yeah. I wondered that. So you've seen the alternative, haven't you? Because My son played the alternative, yeah. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I would have... It's interesting to see how that would have turned out because that character's uh, quite an ass. <laughs> it's weird. It's yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? 
bit of GTA with you guys. That was fun. Crazy, crazy racing. What the hell were you guys racing the other night? Like, I could hear you all just screaming over the chat. <laughs> Soul <laughs> destroying <laughs> wacky races. That's Ollie, yeah, Ollie chose them. Playlist. All right. It was nuts. <laughs> Maybe we'll get you to cover this playlist when, when we talk about your week. <laughs> yes. Um, and the only other thing I managed to do was listen to you guys in the episode that I missed, which was hilarious. So Jam's All got right. this whole thing where she doesn't like listening to herself, which... Oh, I think I sound like a twit. <laughs> which, well, you know, the- <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. Never sugarcoat it. <laughs> so much love. <laughs> truth bombs. You're one of the most entertaining twits I know, Jamie. <laughs> Yeah, but I just I don't I don't see myself listening back to episodes I'm in because I'll just shake my head at myself. But yeah, I wasn't in last week, so I got to listen. Yay! It was funny. I was expecting more shit dealt my way, but you guys were alright. Ollie talked it up a storm before we started, and then he just did not deliver. So I know, yeah. I know. Disappointing. Disappointing. <laughs> and I was like audibly sighing at Luke's puns. <laughs> Right in line with Imogen every time. So I was there in sympathy. Nice. Well, I'll, I'll behave myself tonight. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> yeah, I can't back that up. <laughs> uh, that the list? That's a fair bit of stuff. Yeah, actually. that's yeah. yeah. Well, two weeks plus a whole bunch of new little things. Hmm. So, yeah, busy. So, Mimo, you uh, didn't have your Xbox rock up at the end of the day, did you? No, and it's still not there. Oh, here. still. Question mark. Uh, no, so uh, I'm assuming it was so it's between so it's due to arrive either Monday or sometime this week, and of course me being away all of this week on the other side of the country doesn't help. Uh, I am hoping that it arrives before Friday because my flight back to Perth lands around four, and maybe I can hightail it to the office to pick <laughs> it up before the weekend. Fingers um, crossed. But, uh, Fingers crossed. Everything that I have to do with games in the last two weeks, I said to you guys the other night, I'm having a really disappointing run of, of gameplay <laughs> currently yeah. and not, not doing so great. But I am looking forward to, to getting that and plugging that in. I even have a special HDMI cable waiting at home for it. A special new one, dedicated HDMI. So being very special. But uh, I did get a chance to play some other games, which is exciting. Um, I finally got to spend some more time in Fallout, which was great. But I think I've realized that I am maybe too following the storyline a bit too much at this point and hitting areas that are just a little bit too tricky. So I've got to rail it back a bit and do some general exploring mm-hmm. to try and figure that out. Maybe find me some more power suits um, mm-hmm. along the way um, and join Ollie <laughs> in his yeah, search for tech. I'll lend you a couple. <laughs> How many do you have now? Seven. Seven. Oh, I have a friend who has eight. I was I was <laughs> less impressed by the number of suits that Ollie had, and more impressed by the number of power cores that he's located. What was it like, forty nine or something? No, I've got like seventy. Holy! Yeah, shit. that's ridiculous. So I definitely I need to do more exploring. I'm not full. <laughs> I'm not finding very many of the comics or books or anything like that. So I want to concentrate on doing that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go back and do that. Um, I played a little bit more of Ori since you guys all decided to pick it up this week. Um, or in the sales, um, and you guys were sort of excited about it. I thought, well, I'll jump back in, and I've been stuck on the same level forever uh, and finally got through that and then just got to another bit where I'm now stuck again. Mm. Um, (laughs) But There are huge difficulty spikes. There really is, and once you start (laughs) getting – we'll talk about it more, but uh, yeah, yeah, so I really enjoyed that and – the frustrating side of it, as well as you know, the <laughs> anything else relaxes me apart from the actual gameplay in that game. Mm-hmm. I have progressed building my boat in You Must Build a Boat, so I am further along, and that game is great for travel because I can play it on the plane. Hooray! Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> I've played the GTA Wacky Races, which was uh, just a nice little pin in a very disappointing week of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> you had just. Not a great night. (laughs) Not a great night. was not fun for me, but that's okay. Those things happen. We pick ourselves back up. At at least you didn't didn't have me running around behind you RPGing you out of your car. I in Heroes of the Storm (laughs) last night, so Mm. there's a balancing act. (laughs) Um, We did not too bad in Heroes of the Storm um, last night. Uh, Luke and I played uh, a couple of games with some randoms Hmm. against the AI, and we did okay. 
We had a couple of instances oh, where we okay. were getting our asses kicked and came back strong. It was really good, actually. Nothing to do with the level 40 guys that we were playing with. Nothing at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> we did okay. And and Luke went outside of his comfort zone and played something other than Chaotas. So very Ooh. proud. Yep. Good job. Um, but, yeah, so that was my week in gaming. How about you, Ollie? Uh, I played Fallout. Shocking twist. <laughs> I'm now level... 48 question mark wow so dropped in a few hours into that i played the new star wars battlefront map which was quite fun so fingers crossed that keeps being fun because yeah like i said that game is just a nice for me the nice casual crazy shoot em up that was good i grinded my way through the room three which because everyone was like play it and so i played it for last episode and then i kept playing it because i was a little bored one day and so four and a bit hours later I finished the room three, um, right. and I've played some Ori now as well. So, because peer pressure is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what this entire show is all about. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, peer pressuring us into playing games. Yeah, pretty so much. So far, it's working out all in my favour. So it's all good. <laughs> well, I've played now three new games for this podcast. So you know, hmm. mm. you oh, and I played some GTA, which made me very angry because apparently I've lost all ability in that game. Yeah. Just because just you were getting your ass whooped by a Jamie. Excuses. <laughs> no, I was getting Excuses. my ass whooped by pretty much everyone. Mm. <laughs> and me included, and I was having a bad week, so... <laughs> no, no, I think just, I've beat you in all the playlists. I'll defend myself there. No, you beat me in the playlist overall, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But no, I found some interesting, like, crazy loop and ramp and sky racers style things, so decided to give that the old whirl. And yeah, turns out, not playing GTA for a like a couple months and playing Fallout instead, yeah, <laughs> doesn't do any favors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of them were ridiculous, though. Some of those jumps, you just you had to have perfect combination of angle and momentum. Otherwise, every time you just hit the, the barricade or whatever, ridiculous. No. Some it of those. was the golf cart wave floaty pontoon <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> that was that race. I honestly, I exited out of my screen. For a moment. When I was trying to do the jump for like the millionth time, and Ollie's like, Well, I'm bored and I'm throwing my toys out of the pram. I'm going to shoot Imogen. I was like, You know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Have your fun. Your I'm leaving. Shooting you. Yeah. This sounds always so familiar. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, you would have been, been out of the first corner, Luke. Oh, you would have. Yes. I'm, I'm missile launching dudes now. One corner. Yeah. Well, this, all it would have taken. This, this sounds a lot less like a race and a lot more like a obstacle course from hell. Oh yeah, that is yeah. exactly what it is. Obstacle, it's an course, obstacle course with supercars. Hmm. Yeah. And and golf carts. Yes. Which Don't is get the golf carts. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really That's hate so those golf weird. carts. <laughs> so bad. Well, I managed to finish the room as well, which was cool. So, um, and chatting to you guys, it seems like we all did get different endings, which is uh, quite a, an interesting result, I thought. So that was that was good. But I ended up sinking nine hours into that in the end, and I really shouldn't have because I just dicked around for a huge bunch of the end. <laughs> I, was de- I was determined to uncover every stone and make sure there was nothing left that I had missed. And I'm pretty sure I got there. So there was, there was no um, objects or items in rooms that I had yet to sort of interact and, and find a puzzle solution for left. So that, that was cool. Um, that but, you know of. Well, oh. yeah, that, that's true. I'm, pre- oh, I'm reasonably confident. Put it that way, but at Let's the end of the day, that seed of doubt, though. Let's just <laughs> push that in the soil, <laughs> water it, it a bit. I don't yeah. think it, I don't think it mattered though, because the ending I got seemed like a loss as well. Like it seems like I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is one of those games where, like, if you absolutely go like hell for leather and solve every puzzle, you go too far and actually, you know, overshoot the win ending. That could be how they've designed it. So there's a win ending. I well, I, I'm assuming there is. There's apparently four endings and. The one I got wasn't particularly positive in terms of the character ending up somewhere good. So, yeah, I don't know. I thought it being a bit, a bit Lovecraftian that there was no happy ending. I was like, that's a bit That'd like Cthulhu. That mm, could so be Everything true. just turns to shit in the end. I get it now. Well, one, one of you guys escaped onto the train, didn't you? So, in yeah. theory, well, I that think was... Imogen and I had the both, both the same We had the same ending. one, yeah. Mm. Okay. And it didn't feel like a win. Yeah. What was that ending called? Imprisoned. Yeah, so I had the escape ending. Okay. 
Spoilers, everyone. Yeah, I was going to say that that no, one sounds all positive. the names of an ending. I know, I know. <laughs> Saying Darth Vader is Luke's dad isn't a spoiler. <gasps> Ollie. Yeah. Sorry. Could you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm was really fun this week. So got a little bit of that in last Friday, I think, and then again last night with Imogen. So I picked up um, Vala, the uh, the witch hunter with the double crossbows. Uh, and the reason why I hadn't done that yet is because when we'd been playing previously, the groups, um, we had someone else had already been playing it. And I think that was usually Imogen, actually. But oh, oh my double God. crossbows. Oh, my God. That character's awesome fun. So fun. And like it definitely fits into that wheelhouse of mine with that game with the whole mobile ranged assassin. So that's definitely what I like playing in that game. I've I've nailed that down pretty clearly now. I think so. Got that 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 kill death ratio though. <laughs> yeah. Good. So positive. Yeah. No. Well, well uh. I had the highest number of kills or equal highest number of kills for the last game we played, but my death count was high. So. Yeah, the ratio was not super, great. Super squishy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But it was strange because so I didn't have a lot of um, assisted kills, so that means that most of the ones I was getting were um, solo, mm. which was kind of cool. So, I don't know, I'll just keep working at it. It was literally the first time I'd used that character, so I wasn't expecting to do, you know, hugely terrific things, but that worked out okay. Um, so, I got a, uh, a new Hearthstone console this week, or as I like to call it, a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> new phone. <laughs> I think this thing is cursed for Hearthstone. I really do. So I picked are you, up a. Are you now rubbish at Hearthstone because of the iPhone. All right, so the the month, Wait for it. the new month of of uh, ladder um, started really positively because it you know reset at the um, beginning of December, and I had to replace my phone because my other one was just dying, like it was on its last legs. It wasn't wasn't charging anymore, you know that sort of thing. Um, so I picked up the new iPhone 6s Plus, nice big screen. That would be cool for gaming in general, and I do do a fair bit of gaming on my phone. And ever since then, I've been getting my butt kicked. <laughs> It's been depressing. Like I literally over the last two days have lost five ranks. So yeah, not doing real good. Or tradesman blames his tools, Luke. <sighs> yes, I'm sure it's got nothing to do with that and everything to do with me just being crap. But um, is yeah. it because it's too real? Because it's too HD. <laughs> <laughs> so HD. Uh, I've got no idea. I've got no idea. It is very pretty though. I do like it. So the um the Murloc wing of uh, League of Explorers uh, came out this week, and I got to play that and. Um, it was a very, very cool wing, except for one little factor, and that's that the main character of that um, wing of the adventure, Sir Signy Mergleton, unfortunately is friggin' Jar Jar Binks. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a little bit more gentlemanly, but under that sort of thin layer, it's still friggin' Jar Jar. So I was really I looking like forward George to it. Lucas. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Kind of detracted from the fun a little bit. You, you start off the first um, mission that you play, he's actually stuck in a cook pot, um, sort of getting cooked up by the uh, the enemy that you've got to fight. And uh, you have to basically smash the cook pot and get him out um, before you can start, you know, winning the game properly. I wanted to leave him there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have left him there. Harsh. Yeah, it wasn't really a choice. Like rescue. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, this isn't a Telltale game? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, played a bunch of Ori as well. Ori and the Blind Forest was cool fun. Looking forward to talking about that. Game's freaking hard. Need to sink a whole bunch more hours into that. That's going to keep me busy this week, I think. Wow. Mm. So for gaming news this week, most important thing this morning, mm-hmm. has everyone, and I don't think we all have, bought their PAX Australia tickets for 2016? So excited. I'll guess I'll get on that yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it before we finish recording. Ollie, just uh, only 322 days to go, man. Just get on. Oh, it. I'm running out. <laughs> Shit. That's 300, 332. 332. Okay. Wow. 332. Wow. So it's Hashtag November. maintain the hype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> November 4th to 6th next year in Melbourne. And I think three of the four of us had ours purchased within 10 minutes. Yep. I was at work. I was in the virtual queue at 7 a.m. this morning. I was at (laughs) (laughs) 7.04. Yep. Very excited already, which is absurd because there's still such a long way to go. But, Mm. oh. Oh. I do think, I think they've made the right decision in moving it for multiple factors. Yes. Um, they've listened to, you know, it could be ignored or could be overseen as, you know, there's always going to be a problem. But, you know, a big horse race that stops the nation literally being the week after really was a bit of a, a difficult thing to manoeuvre when it came to accommodation and flights. Mm. Um, so there, you know, up the city is the main thing. Correct. It fills up the city. It fills up um, event spaces for publishers or Penny Arcade guys themselves and other events that are going on, which makes it difficult. Not saying that moving it 
back to the fourth or sixth makes such a big difference because there is still Oaks Day and I think Shield Day, which so it's still a big sort of horse racing season in Melbourne, but not a lot of travel for it. So mm. hopefully that will mean more international guests. Unfortunately, I don't know if you've noticed this, Luke, but that means it will be likely on the same weekend as BlizzCon if they maintain their schedule from this year. Ooh, well, I'm not likely to ever travel to BlizzCon without coming into a large inheritance of some sort. <laughs> so that's a bit of a shame. The lottery, yeah. yeah, I mean, I did enjoy keeping up with all of the coverage this year, though, and especially watching mm. all the um, the esports finals. So that's a little disappointing if that is the case. But I don't know. Is, Bl- is BlizzCon, you, you may know the answer to this, have they sort of stuck with the same weekend every year? Has that been a consistent thing? That's the thing. So in all of the comments made, a couple of I saw saying, you know, thanks for moving. It's great because um, other than the big horse race, there is also the uh, university exams for Australian students uh, around that time as well. So that was a big pain in the butt for a lot of people who would usually be at PAX. Yep. But now that they've moved it, a lot of people have been starting to say, well, this is the same weekend as BlizzCon. Not that we would go, but we would pay and stream it because they have the streaming tickets, et cetera, et cetera. And there's lots of other things you can do on the weekend. Yeah. And uh, some comments back from some people were, are we sure that will be not moved as well? So maybe uh, with the leap year next year and some other stuff going on in the States, maybe they'll move it. It's just um, tough. You can't you can't pick a weekend that's not going to clash with something. It's just exactly right, really especially hard. around that time of year. There's lots of triple A's releasing some really big titles, and 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 Blizzard have always always had BlizzCon that that time of year. Yeah, from my memory, I mean, it's not like it would preclude them from ever coming to PAX Australia because they never have, mm. um, in a big way, because it's always so close to BlizzCon. So why travel all the way to Australia to do it? But um, hmm. we'll see. Yeah, interesting. Just stream in the queues. They'll be fine. Well, yeah, exactly. stream, streaming has become a much bigger thing at the event as well, especially if uh, YouTube and Twitch um, make it down again, which I'm guessing they'll continue to do because um, mm, they're it investing. It will mean that Pax Oz Twitch will compete with BlizzCon Twitch, though. So, oh, oh, will mean. it with the with the timing differences? I mean, we'll be on Australia time, so True. that is a good point. Twenty-four Most hours of content. Of it really will be <laughs> for, for the hardcore. So we, we could literally finish gaming, go back to the hotel, and I could just like not sleep all night and watch games streaming. From BlizzCon. That sounds well, you completely could. different to normal packs for you. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> you could. I think the rest of us may suffer. Yeah, well, it's not my fault that you're all weak mortals that need sleep. <laughs> Requires sleep. Requires sleep. Yeah. The the other thing I'm really curious about with the timing is that, um, you know, for uh, PAX Australia, the last few years has been a bit of a week-long event as far as other uh, sort of similar events in the games industry happening for Australia. They've, you know, traditionally had GCAP, which is the Games Developers um, Conference of Asia Pacific as well, happening uh, a few days before PAX. And given that they've moved the date now, I'm wondering whether they'll move GCAP also because otherwise there'd be a bit of a separation between the two and that'll increase you know travel expenses, people who are going to both and that sort of thing. That's why they've usually tried to tie them together. But if they do keep it together, then if they keep it the week before PAX, then they're going to clash with Melbourne Cup. So I don't know. It seems a bit weird. If they do it the week after, that could be good. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know it's- how much coordination is going on behind the scenes trying to teal those events up together. Um, there's at least yeah. one other that I'm forgetting about as well. Um, it's a well, really busy time of year, so props to to PA Penny Arcade to for listening because finding accommodation, especially flying from the other side of Australia, it does make it incredibly difficult. We have to book up flights so far in advance, and accommodation we are limited. Although this year we did really well, I think. Yeah. Um, so we will uh, have to wait and see how it all falls out. But I also get the feeling that you know that feeling. A lot of people are saying. Three-day tickets didn't sell out until, you know, September before the October event. I don't think that will be the case this year. I do feel like they'll sell out a lot quicker. I do feel like a lot of people have bought them yeah. over what would have bought them. What? Oh, you know, words. Words. <laughs> yeah. Well, they'll, they'll All clever. the you mentioned means yeah. that it's it's more accessible to, to a large particular groups, yeah. especially right. students, uni students. Especially so. that Friday. So the uni students, they've finished their exams. Mm. You know, they usually will be, well, that's broad generalisation, but being available on the Friday, if they're local, then that will make a huge difference. Early um, bird pricing as well. So that might yeah, make Yeah, and difference. early bird pricing only until 24th, hmm. when previously we had until the end of July. So if they'd followed previous models, it would have been July, end of July 2016, early bird prices, but it's the is 24th it, of December. Yeah. Is it just a $10 jump at the moment? Uh, 15, we don't know. 15 across three days. Oh, okay. 
It oh, just says what the prices are now. That's true. It does true. not say what it is afterwards. I think it would be a reasonable assumption to anticipate at least a five dollar increase across each day. So I, it probably yeah. might even be more than that. I'm not sure. Uh, I think just by days. the individual prices, yes, mm. they're fifty five dollars for each day. But I have it in front of me right now. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. Cool. The cool. three day three day pass last year non early bird was one sixty. Mm. Early bird one fifty. Early bird this year is one fifty. So. Maybe it will stay 160. I really no couldn't give a crap if it went up, you know, and I had to pay it. You know, it could go up another fifty dollars, and I'd still not even blink at this point. It's just the event that I'll go to no matter what. It is mm. fantastic. Mm. Um, so, and the important note for anyone who might be listening and also going is that we'll hopefully all be there. Mm. I just bought my ticket, so there you go. Nice. Yay. We just got to make sure we're not on the same flight as Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> I will curse you all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone traveling from Perth, look out for Ollie. He's tall. Yeah. <laughs> if he looks like he's panicking and running for a flight, maybe don't catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so uh, other, other big stuff that happened this week, quite exciting. We had the, the Game Awards. I spoke about that a couple of episodes ago and uh, the, the nominees and, and what we thought about what was coming up. And they actually had the awards. So I managed to listen to a bit of it while I um, was sort of streaming it during the day. I couldn't actually watch the video. I just sort of managed to catch a few of the winners, um, but only, only snippets here and there. And then on the weekend, I managed to catch the full YouTube stream and sat down and watched the whole thing while I was um, doing some some other stuff. So um, I think overall it went for about three hours with like the pre-show and then the actual awards themselves. And it was a solid three hours of entertainment. I thought it was really, really well done, actually. So did anyone else watch any of it? No. I just had your comments filtering through. Yeah. I relied on you your updates. Me. Yeah. I what went the- for Luke's streaming option. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, if anyone um, listening does get a chance, it's worth uh, checking out. I think yeah, obviously a bit of the news and, and stuff is, you know, cold now because it's already been leaked. But um, as a production, I thought it was excellent. But there were some definite highlights, like uh, a couple of the things that I wanted to mention that I thought were actually incredibly re- well done. One of the awards was the the Trending Gamer Award, uh, which ended up going to Greg Miller, formerly of uh, IGN fame, who now does his own channel on YouTube called Kind of Funny. Um, so you guys may or may not be familiar with him. Um, mm-hmm. So when he actually came up to accept his award, um, he had a fantastic acceptance speech, and it basically called out all of the other people involved in the games industry. Um, you know, besides the the obvious ones that everybody sort of thinks of, like the the designers and developers and companies, like all of the the smaller people sort of behind the scenes who you know so, some of the unsung heroes essentially, and uh, you know basically just giving them credit and and you know calling them out for their contributions to the uh, the scene as well, which I thought was really well done. Um, so that was good. And uh, the other highlight was also uh, when Reggie from uh, Nintendo um, America came up and, and basically did a huge tribute to uh, the late Mr. Iwata, um, former president of Nintendo Entertainment. And, uh, you know, just a bit of a, a eulogy for him and just, you know, said some pretty impactful stuff about his experience of, uh, you know, looking up at him as a, a leader and the head of the company and some of the legacy that he's left behind. It was just really, you know, it was quite touching. So it was really good to watch. And, uh, yeah, the awards themselves, I think we, we actually called a few of them quite closely. So we, uh, you know, f- first and foremost, the, the big one, of course, was the Game of the Year, which ended up, in fact, going to The Witcher 3, which is, I think, what would have a few of us thought. Yep. Um, on that note, actually, I was at a Christmas function a few days ago and uh, managed to pick up a Secret Santa present, and lo and behold, someone bought me The Witcher 3. So... <laughs> Rigged, there goes totally three weeks rigged. of your life. That was a <laughs> yeah. little convenient, I gotta say. So thanks to Simon for that one. That was really awesome. Um, I got him a copy of Far Cry Four as well, which uh, I hope he enjoys. You can just Not just- <laughs> yeah, that's it. Did you did you see today? Apparently, someone's actually made a mod for The Witcher Three, <laughs> which allows you to do all of the combats with Gwent um, yeah. games instead of actual <laughs> I saw fights. That this Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty awesome. All right, I'm just getting a whiz through a couple of the results now without going through the whole lot. Some interesting ones. We had um, most anticipated game was No Man's Sky. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that one yet. I think we'll mm. probably talk about that at some point. Um, best indie game went to Rocket League, so it was right on that count. That was good. Yes. Games for Impact was Life in, is Strange, so Jamie's playing that at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what you think of that. Yes. I yeah. will report back when I've played some more. Yeah, uh, which have picked up a few awards, actually. So CD Projekt Red um, picked up Developer of the Year. They're, of course, the company behind Witcher. They also got uh, Best Role-Playing Game, um, which was a good one. Uh, Nintendo did reasonably well also. They got uh, Best Shooter with Splatoon, uh, Best Family Game uh, for Super Mario Maker also. 
Fallout didn't pick up anything, which I don't think was a huge surprise. I think, you know, maybe we, we got the feeling that the game was a little undercooked in a few ways and, and maybe cost them the it's chance unpolished. at a few words. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, best art direction, of course, went to Ori in the Blind Forest, which is convenient because we're going to talk about that game exactly tonight. And Metal Gear uh, Solid Five: uh, Phantom Pain got Best Action Adventure Game, which was cool. And there was a bit of controversy around that announcement at the event because um, uh, Keith Sutherland was up there um, and he actually accepted the award on behalf of uh, Kojima Productions um, and Konami. And um, it came out after the fact that um, apparently Konami had actually barred uh, Hideo uh, Kojima from attending the awards, so he couldn't actually um, receive the award for that. So, well, it was a contractual thing, and I think it's got something to do with his "quote unquote" holiday. Mm-hmm. I believe it sounds like there's some sort of agreement that he'll go on holiday, and this he'll you know not be you know seen to be representing his his games, and they're the pro- product of the production company and him himself and et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's less, you know, nobody made a phone call and said, don't come or else it's probably something that has been known for a while that he wasn't going to be able to attend. And and lawyers confirmed that for him, Mm. um, that he was not to travel. But uh, I did like that they did the little piece to camera um, aside and uh, there was uh, audible response from the audience uh, when it was found out that he was uh, not able to come for legal reasons and they did mention that he would definitely be watching though so and that was really nice and touching and everyone gave him a round of applause for that so and he definitely was watching because he was on the twitter um sort of responding to jeff keely um who was presenting some of the stuff that he said he he did actually you know give a a very good explanation as to what was going on and uh yeah you're right the audience was pretty dissatisfied with that so the the drama Mm. continues i I get the impression that sort of similar to what you've said a lot of the news sites are kind of blowing this up to be a bit bigger than it it is because it's you know it's, it's almost satire at this point how weird it's been throughout the year but the whole thing's really unfortunate i mean i think there probably has been a bit of a cost to you know the audience at the end of the day with some of the stuff that could have been that now won't be because of whatever drama is going on behind the scenes i mean i think ollie recently said it uh, well when we mentioned you know the death of the um the silent hill uh, playable teaser um yeah, silent hill PT. yeah I mean, that had all the indications of, of being a sensational game if it actually sort of got fully developed, but unfortunately it was uh, deaded before its time, which mm-hmm. is disappointing. Yeah. I don't know. I hope they can get their stuff together because it's not good press for um, Konami, regardless of what their reasons are. They they still come out of it looking like the bad guy. And I think it is a real shame for for a, uh, a creative individual who's had a, a huge impact on the company and some of its most memorable franchises, you know, not getting some of the recognition they deserve at events like this, regardless of the um, the corporate reasons behind it. It's just, I mean, it's a situation where really nobody wins. So got to deal with it. But there was a lot of other uh, sort of trailers and uh, and world premieres and things at the event and some interesting news coming out of it. Um, one that caught my attention was that uh, Telltale Games, of course, makers of uh, The Walking Dead series of games and uh, the uh, Minecraft story mode, which we've talked about recently, um, have announced that they've got a new Batman um, game, which is going to be coming out in 2016. Yay. So hmm. very cool. And just like everything they've done, it's going to come out on consoles, PC and mobile. Um, and apparently they've said... This iteration of Batman will give fans a first-hand opportunity to dive deeper into the complex life and mind of Bruce Wayne. So it sounds like... I like that. Buying whatever he wants. Well, I I want (laughs) to leave Bruce Wayne. I don't want to, you know, you do the Batman stuff in so many games. You're Batman. You do all of the Batman things and there's a little bit of Bruce Wayne in there. Hmm. I want it to be a Bruce Wayne story. Like, how does he reconcile the two halves? And, and especially if it's full of choices and it can be so dark because it's a Telltale game, they don't have to sugarcoat everything. It's going to be, oh, I hope it's juicy. It'll be curious to see if they have carte blanche to um, make permanent changes to things within the yes. setting. Mm. Yeah, if they're not held back by canon, then wow. Yeah could be thrown for a loop just constantly. The one thing I'm hoping be- for, which seems to be absent from a lot of Batman games, um, the Arkham games not really withstanding in this because they do, do it a little bit. I prefer if they did it more. Is that I've always considered, you know, Batman, in addition to being the superhero, he's also the world's greatest detective. And I love seeing that actually carried through in the games, like more of the detective sort of stuff where he's actually yes. solving puzzles and crimes and that sort of thing, as well as being a kick-ass fighter. I agree wholeheartedly. And, and if, if there was the opportunity, you know, there's a puzzle, something has gone wrong and he has the chance to follow a lead either as Batman or as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And how that might play out if you, if you make one choice or the other. That just things like that. Oh, 
Like, I'm excited. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. I'm going to make a call on this one. Yeah. I, I've been reading a little bit. People reckon it might follow the Hush style storyline, like a version of that. I don't reckon that. I'm going to call um, Court or Night of the Owls. I reckon that's going to be the. Hmm. I reckon they're going to run with that. I'm going to call. I'm going to make a call now that we can rewind to if I'm right. <laughs> Only if you're yeah. right. <laughs> Only if I'm right. If I'm wrong, if right. um, I'm going to delete the episode of iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm really curious about is what voice actors they get in. So are they actually going to get Kevin Conroy to do Batman and are they actually going to get, uh, you know, Mark Hamill involved to do some Joker stuff? That would be <laughs> sensational. Mm, we'll have to wait and see. Um, on the topic of Telltale, uh, they also announced a bit of information about their next Walking Dead uh, game, which is coming out in uh, February 2016 as well. So the next one is going to be uh, based on the character Michonne from the actual uh, HBO uh, it's HBO, no, sorry, AMC, um, the live series. So um, Michonne, of course, is the uh, the samurai sword-wielding, uh, fighting crazy chick who walks around with a couple of uh, zombies that have had their jaws torn off um, that she has chained to them um, in the early stages when she gets introduced as a character. Pretty massive character in the comics as well. Um, mm-hmm. But as a uh, series, it's going to be a very short one. It's apparently only going to be three episodes long. So just a, a nice, simple little... Filler. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually doing a season three of that game. They haven't announced anything formally yet, I don't think. Um, and the way they kind of left it at the end of season two, they probably could have gone either way, um, continuing or not. So not sure what's going to happen there. What other stuff? Uh, some interesting VR stuff happening um, at the event. We had uh, the, the world premiere um, look at uh, Rock Band VR. So um, with uh, Oculus having its uh, consumer market uh, device hitting next year, um, the uh, Oculus founder Palmer Lucky actually had a uh, a bit of input there as a like a bit of an ad clip they did where they actually um, got together with uh, a, a band and um, oh actually it was Dragon Force they got together with it was really cool so Dragon mm. Force of course who have done you know one of the toughest uh, rock band tracks in history which is Through the Fire and the Flames I love that track um, mm-hmm. they uh, did did the video sort of showcasing um, what that's going to look like and I I've got to say like as far as VR experiences go. Being able to play on stage, looking around, you know, adoring fans sort of screaming at you, your band, you know, to the side and behind you, it does seem like a pretty cool experience to try and emulate in a VR environment. So what did you guys think about that? I was excited. I, hmm. I, I love those games. I'm not sure I'm not sure the, if the VR is necessary. Yeah, I'd have to see some more, I think. I'm curious as to how the control will work more than anything. Well, you'd have to be able to play without looking, looking at, at it? buttons. Hmm. Yeah, I'd imagine they'll just overlay it. So what some VR people are doing at the moment, if it's in a set thing, is you can actually see your VR body to help with the immersion. Mm. And they model the controller. Like um, at EGX recently, they had a VR thing which they modeled the um, joystick in the game on the one they were actually holding, so it matched up. Okay. So they might match the, con- the guitar controller to the actual guitar model in the game. Given how accurate you need to be with games like Rock Band, um, you know, with your timing of all your notes and when you're hitting mm. your chords and things, you'd want to have absolutely no latency on that image, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. you can usually um, adjust that because even, even TVs have different latencies in them. I, every TV I've had to play, one of those games on, I've had to adjust it because it just messes things up. So I think that's a fixable thing, but... It would depend. I mean, can if you can't see your fingers hitting the buttons and you rely on the visual of your fingers, like you need to have that reference now and then when you're playing, mm. that might throw you. Yeah. So, I, pl- I play Guitar Hero like I type on a keyboard like a retard. I need to look at my fingers. <laughs> well, see, I don't. I'm beyond that stage now. So I'm keen to give it a try, but it just they'll have to sell it to me a little more before I'm willing to invest in the technology, I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. See, I just want VR to be a thing. So any push for VR, <laughs> I, I want, I'm happy mm-hmm. for them to make it more mainstream and get it out there. Next year is looking like being an expensive year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Definitely. God. So, uh, yeah, and, and speaking of an expensive uh, year next year, we're all probably going to want to be replacing our controllers when we snap them in half after getting uh, Dark Souls 3, which also got premiered <laughs> at uh, the Game Awards. So, Ola, you looked at the, uh, the Dark Souls uh, trailer just before we started recording mm. tonight didn't you what, what, what do you make of it it looks like dark souls mm-hmm. <laughs> it Can really confirm. just looks <laughs> yeah from the trailer it just looks more of like the formula is not broken we're not going to fix it sort of thing mm. and that's fine so if the game is literally just we tweak the things that were not that great and maybe introduce a couple of new things you want to try out which i have a feeling is what it will be they're not going to massively shift it then that's fine and then just continue the story that's all I can see it being, really. 
and I'm, that's fine. I'm yet to play any of the Souls games, and I get the impression that they may actually appeal to me a great deal. Cause oh, look, they're not as controller snapping as what people make them out to be, especially on PC. Mm. They're really not that bad. But still notoriously difficult. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't return. I played Dark Souls 1 for a bit, and yeah. Hmm. <laughs> just just <laughs> lost I it. I was like, okay, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, <laughs> flag- flagellate yourself any further. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also had the uh, the world premiere for uh, well, actually, I don't know if it was the world premiere but they showed, showed a trailer for uh, the new Far Cry Primal which is coming out next year so this is the one which takes uh, Far Cry back to the Stone Age and um, I want it yeah instead of having like guns and explosives you're going to have like Far Cry Paleo <laughs> <laughs> yep I don't see that on any posters no, no. <laughs> that's what I'm going to see on all the posters <laughs> oh. uh, well, the whole um, sort of crafting with animal parts thing is going to become pretty relevant with this game, I think. Oh, now yeah. I've just got this picture in my head of, like, the Fallout 4 gun mod with animal parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I honestly think that's probably the <clears throat> model they'll use. That Take this rib me. and sharpen this tooth with this stone and then wrap it with yeah, some leather hide. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> You've upgraded your armour skill. Now you can make new armours out of dinosaur bits and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It'll be, yeah. So is it going to be early enough for dinosaurs? No, I think it's later than that. Um, okay. I was just making shit up. They could have an Easter egg sort of in there with a dinosaur hidden somewhere. Wouldn't surprise me at all, actually. Um, mm. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> but the thing I'm wondering is, like, is Far Cry kind of becoming like the next sort of yearly uh, sort of new installment game, like uh, Assassin's, like Creed. Assassin's Creed or yeah. Bla- mm. Black Ops or you know any of the Call of Duty sort of stuff? It, it seems like they're coming out with new ones more rapidly than ever before, so... Yeah. yeah. Will there yeah. be multiplayer on this one? Uh, I don't play as a tribe. So. That'd be cool. Hmm. No, I'm no, pretty sure they said it wasn't actually. So that's, that's really interesting. As long as they don't do the same, like let's clear out the bases for the fiftieth time and let's capture this new point. Oh look, there's four more bases on the horizon that you can cleanse out. Mm. As long as they start shifting away from that formula, I'll be very happy. Yeah. And good of viewpoints. <laughs> yeah. Lol. So different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we had another big event over the uh, the weekend as well after the Game Awards, and that was the uh, the Sony PlayStation Experience um, conference, which they held, which is basically a, a Sony um, themed showcase of a whole bunch of developers and upcoming games and uh, and technology and stuff. So you know, Sony had a bit of stuff on display for their upcoming VR pushes and some of the the new games that are going to be happening in in VR. Um, probably mm. the big one on the list that they uh, talked about was there's a new Psychonauts game um, which is coming out in VR. So do, do you? guys know much about Psychonauts? Has anyone played a Psychonauts game? It's a game? great game. Yeah? I played the original no. one. It was. It really does fun. look like my type of game, though. It's a shooter, isn't it? Uh, more... What's the way I want to explain it? You could say that, yeah, but I definitely there's definitely puzzle elements to it as well. Okay. At least the first one was. I don't know about the second. I cannot speak anything about the second one. Interesting. Because all we've got is 30 seconds of a dude putting on a VR headset. Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. No, it'll be interesting to see. I, I get the impression that the Sony VR product is going to be probably one of the more polished ones going into the market next year, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, also, the big thing that's been getting a lot of press uh, since the event was a Square Enix um, actually showing off the uh, trailer for the remake of Final Fantasy VII. Um, this is really exciting because it looks gorgeous. Like comparing the graphics from the original FF7 to this, it's like you're stepping into a movie. It's just nuts. Um, but a little bit of controversy following that because it looks like um, they've announced that it's actually going to be released as an episodic um, sort of segmented release as opposed to like a full game in one hit. So people don't quite know what to make mm, of that. Yeah, it's surprising. Is episodic the new early release? Well, I, a lot of people, you <laughs> know, made a third of a game. Quick. Ship it. Yeah, release well, it, release it. <laughs> Make it episodic, go. Well, I, I mean, the, the, the cynic in, in me and m- many other people sort of uh, look at it as the, the sort of milking it for cash kind of uh, angle. Yeah. Um, which right. obviously makes sense from a financial perspective, but I don't know. There, there could be some benefits to it in terms of development, you know, allowing them to get things out early and refine the process from feedback on early iterations. So there could be some benefit to that. But I don't know. Like they, they've actually said that we want to release as an, as an episodic game because it's so big and, and remaking it is just going to be bigger than we could possibly, you know, manage um, on its yeah. own. And I'm just like, but, so rather but, than delay it, <laughs> let's release tiny bits of it. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Charge like. $10 for six bits as opposed to $40 for one game. Mm. 
Yeah. It's been a controversial year for uh, PC releases in particular, I think. I mean, if you're going to release it like that, you want to make sure that it releases clean and smooth and doesn't have any of the issues that some of the other games that you've had. Oh, what was that? Yeah, yeah Batman. <laughs> uh, Just part, Cause 3 seems to be the other one that's getting a lot of bad press lately yeah. about being an under uh, sort of polished game that's got a lot of uh, bugs and issues and things. It just seems to be happening all the time at the moment. It's mm. yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they better get it right, I guess, is, is what I'm getting the sensation from the whole sort of thing. If they're going to release one episode, it better be right. Yeah, better be worth <laughs> But there it. might, there yeah. might be enough love for Final Fantasy Seven to, to carry it. Yeah, oh, well, a little the bit. Fanboyism alone. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm curious about that. Fantasy I'm wondering VII. if I'll enjoy it because it's actually going to be a good game, or whether I'll enjoy it because it's just that nostalgia that's you know mm. twanging my uh, strings from way, way back. But it's going to be the first one, then hopefully it's the second one. Well, yeah, mm. true. But you wonder whether playing games like that at the age that you were when it first came out, whether you're looking through it with rose-tinted goggles because your expectations back then are so much different compared to now. I well, honestly, it's the same for everything, though. What Star Wars Battlefront? It's massive nostalgia. Fallout Four is because the other Fallout's were brilliant, so mm. everyone's got to get it, and yeah. it's a huge game, and it won no awards because it runs off nostalgia. But the difference <laughs> is, I can watch a Star Wars movie now and know that it's still awesome, but I'm un- less likely to step back into Final Fantasy Seven. Um, you mean like the original, original trilogy, game, people? Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't freak out, guys. Don't freak out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. I think a lot of people are going to have mixed reactions on it, depending on what their original experience was. What? Um, because people have opinions. Madness, yeah. Luke. Oh, I know. My <laughs> original experience was spoiled. I had a friend spoil a very crucial moment of that game for me. So I never got to really experience it. It makes me sad. Is Final Fantasy VII the one with the gun over the entire city? Yes. Like the city-sized gun? Yeah, the Midgar um, cannon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's the one. It's the one with Sephiroth. The ah, uh, uh, yes, Mr. The, Broody Man. The, the cool operatic. I know which one we're talking yep. about. Yeah, where, where the the end scene, uh, sort of when they're having the hu- huge final combat scene, is like, oh no, Sephiroth. And they've got this big sort of opera mm-hmm. number going mm-hmm. in the background. Very very cool. Ah um, oh, yes, the cutscene where you're like, I wish the game was like this, and it's not. <laughs> yeah, I basically. do remember that. <laughs> but now it might be. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well, moving away from um, PlayStation Conference, we also had a couple of other uh, minor news items this week. Uh, Wii U is finally getting Minecraft. So a bunch of people will be happy about that, my son very much included. Uh, it's shipping on the 17th of December as well, which is real soon, and is going to have six um, packs included with it. Uh, where it's like um, different skins and and city textures and and things like that. But the coolest thing about this, I think, is the fact that you're actually going to be able to use that awesome Wii U gamepad um, when you're playing Minecraft because that thing is perfect for this game. So having your full inventory. Yeah, they really that. nailed their market for this one because you're talking a Nintendo console, which tends to be a younger generation anyway, who have been playing Minecraft Pocket Edition for an age on iPads and and phones everywhere. Mm, yeah. Um, to, to to pair it with the Wii U just makes in complete sense. So. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Say goodbye to your son. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's already Does at he a level of obsession. To yeah. yeah. Tell, tell him he I'd like an invite. I want to check it out. Oh, he will. In, he will invite you, Jamie, because he'll want to create traps for you. That is how he. Rolls. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm going to have to study so that I can foil his plans. <laughs> he talks he's about it. He's getting all the very, time. very good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And uh, Destiny as well. For Destiny players, apparently uh, Destiny is getting a Sparrow racing mode. Um, so the Sparrows being the, uh, the little sort of speeder jet bikes that you can mm. race in that game. So, yeah, something different to do in Destiny instead of the pew-pew. Kind of cool. I really enjoy that game. I should get back to it at some point. Yeah. yeah it's a fun I, game. Yeah. Hmm. It's, especially with friends. Most especially yeah, with I friends. Get a f- yeah, I get a feeling with, well, unfortunately, Luke, you're on the wrong console. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I get a feeling with uh, the <laughs> Xbox anyway. arrival. <laughs> um, with the Xbox arrival, I might pick up Destiny um, and give it another go because I have it on PS3, but didn't really play a lot. And I do feel like it'll be the only game that I can play yeah. with you guys, so that you can witness how crap I am at first-person Yay. shooters. <laughs> you think I'm crap at other? We, we games? already have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no aim assist on Thanks. this one. <laughs> Thanks. Ollie. Yeah. For all those times That's that people right. think I'm being mean to Ollie, just just know this is Ollie all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah That's fine. We're all good at different things. Uh. 
<laughs> Ollie it being salty. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, different things and Ollie being salty, let's talk about Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, no, I'm not ready for Ollie to be mean about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I love this game. I want to. I'm ruin it. really enjoying it. I, I think we should start with Imogen because Imogen was the one that sort of uh, clued us onto this one in the first place when yeah, we were chatting fair. about it weeks ago. So. Um, do you, you want to just sort of take us through what you heard about this game or did you literally just jump in blind when you saw it on Steam? No. Uh, so PAX 2014, uh, wandering around with Kate and we saw this game and it speaks to both of us. Um, so we had a bit of a go um, at the Xbox stand in 2014 and I added it to my – I have a little list on my mobile whenever we attend a PAX of games that I will look at um, when we get home. And, uh, yeah, as soon as it became available, as soon as I had a computer that was uh, decent enough, it was the first thing that I downloaded on Steam. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, I've said before previously, I played for about 20 minutes on a keyboard. I went, nope, and went out and got a controller. (laughs) Um, So we should probably just clarify at this point that it is a platformer. Like it... The, it's it's a platform, yeah. Pe- people um, will identify that pretty much instantly when they start playing it. it the graphics mm-hmm. for it, um, if you see screenshots, kind of give it away as well. But it is a very uh, artsy kind of game. But it is a, a full-on platformer for sure. I don't think you could be any clearer on that. I really enjoy it because it's a challenge. So it's a platformer that is well done and pretty, uh, and also a challenge. So for me, it hits all the right notes. I really enjoy it. Having said that. If I play for an hour and make no progress, I will put it down and come back to it. I can see how it would be very frustrating <laughs> for some people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, as a platformer, it's um, tricky. <laughs> I think... Just a little? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ollie mentioned it before. I, oh, was it Ollie or, or Imogen? I think one of you guys mentioned before that um, there's a definite... Jump in skill level required at me. one it particular point. It was me. Point. Yeah, I don't get any me. credit. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the difficulty never fight heal. is... Never <laughs> Ouch. Um, yeah, it, I, I was surprised because I was enjoying it. It was so cute. I was doing well and then suddenly, bam, nope, nope, you can't get past here. Don't be stupid. Mm. You're not good enough. Yeah. Um, amazing. Wow. So challenging. Yeah. So artistically beautiful game. I, I, I'd recommend anybody who is not familiar with it to at least just go and look at some screenshots, if nothing else. It, it was a tough contest for um, best art direction at the Game Awards this year, but I, I don't feel bad about Ori and the Blind Forest winning at all because the game is freaking gorgeous. No. Yeah, it's, no, um, there is, it is also really stuff out there. Mm. They've someone stitched together all of the story pieces. So if you have played it and you just want to rewatch all of the pretty cutscenes, uh, then you can do that. Um, but spoilers, um, I certainly haven't watched um, past a certain point. Um, but I just like rewatching those scenes. I think they're spectacular. Yeah, yeah. The story is. Um I don't know. It's kind of a little bit abstract. It's. I mean, there's no real, I guess, English element to it. It's very. Um, I don't know. I, I was getting sort of feels from. Have any of you ever seen the uh, the Princess Mononoke, um, the anime? Yeah, film? yeah, it's very, very similar when with the, okay, sort of the voice please. of the wind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd call it distinctly Japanese uh, sort of style at all, or, or you know, anime style, because it's, it's kind of it is a little, but not really. But the the main character in Western it, art style. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's fair. The, the main character in it, uh, Ori, who's like a, a little uh, spirit animal. He's like almost like a little spirit fox, I think you could say. Um, they never really yeah. identify him as a particular breed of animal or anything like that. And the other characters... Uh, the forest spirit. Yeah, yeah, the other characters don't sort of identify he's as, the, as He's the final animals. light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. Isn't it a she, actually? Uh, it's a she, yeah. She's a little light. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And the... the She's like, played half an hour. Yeah. And she... <laughs> She's a she? Wait, what? What? <laughs> She's a she. I was just too busy trying not to I thought to it was always Ori. I thought it was always Ori did this, Ori did this. Anyway. Oh, well, well, there you go. Maybe because Ori sounds so much like Ollie, we were identifying it as being a male character. <laughs> so It's a male name, but in game she is female. Sure. There you go. Sure. I think we can go with that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a tough game. Like there's um 
there's a bit of progression choice that goes on with it as well, which I think is quite interesting. So, and when you're actually um, playing it and going through the different levels, it, there's not real clear splits between the levels. There's sort of, it's an open sprawling map that you need to explore and you go to different areas for different tasks. And uh, I think that there is a logical manner in which you explore it. The, the map exploration actually reminds me a lot of like when you play some of the earlier Metroid games how you kind of have to double back when you get certain upgrades and abilities to navigate parts of the map that you couldn't navigate earlier. Or unlock the secrets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, like maybe you get a um, ability to, to breathe underwater or to do like double jumps or, you know, things like that. And uh, then, then you can get to different areas of the map and you have to go back to wherever that, that place was. But the combat's really interesting. Like you you end up, do you, do you guys remember what it's called? It's like a, um, a spirit uh, fire. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, oh, I've forgotten the name. Spirit flame. Spirit fire, your little friend. Yeah, yeah. Spirit, spirit flame, yeah. So there's, there's like a little ball of light that follows you around uh, and you, you basically fire at enemies from that ball. Um, and the, the shots don't really look particularly accurate, but they're kind of heat-seeking in a way. So what it, whatever's nearby to that little yeah. flame is what gets hit with it and you get to upgrade it later on where it hits multiple targets and fires quicker and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so, and there's three different, um, trees of progression as you sort of get experience points and, and gain upgrades. And I think each of the, the trees are themed around something in particular. So, um, one appears to be sort of more of the combat kind of tree where you're upgrading your spirit fire and, uh, having different sort of hostile attacks that you can use. Uh, one appears to be more of a utility kind of tree where you're, you're gaining different um, methods of moving and interacting with your surroundings and being able to look at hidden areas and stuff like that. Um, and the third one, I think, is more sort of health themed, where you you get additional health um, pickups and uh, and things like that. Um, does that sound about right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Survival um, yeah, and defense the- abilities, convenience and exploration abilities, and then attack and offensive abilities. That sounds about right. Yeah. Those are those are triple the three jump trees. My aim. Mm. Yeah. I want to triple jump everywhere. Yeah, like you see things like that on the tree and you immediately think to yourself, need to get that because there's going to be areas that I can't get to without it, basically. And also it'll save my butt. It'll just save my butt. <laughs> yeah. It's also a bit, Straight up uh, you know, it's a bit sandboxy in that way in that a lot of the earlier level you cannot get to. I mean, if you look at the map, there's whole areas that you will not be able to get to until you can get abilities that you will only get later on in the game. So mm. it's one of those things you're going to have to note and go back, especially if you're a completionist, you're going to be going back and, and crossing a lot of territory um, to try and unlock bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're stuffed, so Luke. Depends on your progression. I'm stuffed? Why is that? <laughs> yeah, because you're a completionist. That is true, and I have actually been doing that so far. Like, I've been uh, completing every little area of the map I possibly can. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you called that right. You pick up, uh, th- there's two sort of um, consumable resources you have as you're playing. Um, one is sort of your life uh, spheres, which as you take damage, they go down. Um, and you can pick up additional containers for them as you move on, similar to uh, like if anyone's ever played a Mega Man game. It's not too different to that. Um, and the other one is like your spirit energy, which you can use. And this is one of my favorite things in the game. You actually don't have save points. You have to create them as you go on. So you actually have to expend energy to make um, points where you can save your game. And the choice of expending that energy so that you can create a point so that you don't have to go back too far when you die is a bit of a tactical decision at the best of times um, if you're running low on that resource. So I thought that was really cool, actually. Mm. Yeah, initially it doesn't really make a lot of sense early on in the game. Uh, but certainly where I'm at at the moment, you can create a save point and then maybe get maybe four or five jumps up or across and suddenly realize you made a mistake <laughs> because now when you go back, <laughs> you don't have the ability to save because you have to make it to the next sort of um, crystal to sort of gain enough again and then you're stuck redoing one part that is just incredibly frustrating and it is the joy and the suck of the game all in one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So th- there is one notable part where I think um, due to a- an ability that you get, the skill required to play the game shoots up massively in one big hit. And uh, I don't know how you ladies think about this, but when you get the dash ability, are you up to that yet? That is difficult. Bash. Uh, bash. Yeah, bash is that. that bash, that's the one. Yeah. Bash. So yep. this bash ability, basically, it has three different purposes. One, it allows you to basically throw yourself at rapid speed towards an enemy. 
The second purpose is that you can actually use it to um, sort of throw yourself rapidly towards objects that are high up. So you can actually use it to, you know, climb up um, through, you know, a height. So you, you can basically bash up, bash up, bash up, bash up if there's a chain of things that you can kind of, uh, you know, grasp, which allows you to get to some areas that you normally couldn't. Um, but the third uh, purpose for it, which is one of the trickiest um, bits, is it actually allows you to, um, take projectiles that are being fired at you and fire them back in a particular direction. And that direction is basically whichever is the opposite to the direction you're bashing in. So like if a creature shoots a little uh, sort of fireball at you or something like that, and um, you catch the bash control before it hits you and bash in the opposite, um, back, maybe bash down, you basically fling the fireball up away from you. Um, and you actually need to do that. And at you different fling you the other way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you have to do that at various parts it's to unlock certain doors excellent. and things. Yeah. It's hard. It's really the, hard. The manipulation of the momentum. It is. It's so challenging. And at first, it's, it's tricky to wrap your head around um, because you have to make the decision quickly. Time will pause for mm. a moment or two when you target a projectile or an enemy, but you have to make the decision fast which direction you're going to project in and make sure mm. that the opposite direction is the correct line for the projectile or the monster um, because it assists in um, beating some of the levels. It'll, it'll do certain things like maybe pass through a little portal or, or break something that needs to be broken. So when you chain those together, those decisions have to happen rapidly. And sometimes you, you're sending a projectile off, but then you have to dash off to meet it at its next destination to change its course again. Mm. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's such a wonderful mechanic and I'm enjoying it so much, but oh my goodness, the part I'm on now is so difficult. Oh, yeah. It definitely comes a bit of a... It reminds me of... Yeah, it reminds me of the classic platformers where you would spend hours on one bit and it was you just had to stand exactly there and you had to do exactly this and press jump exactly yeah. there. <laughs> Otherwise, you were never going to make that jump. Yeah. And and it's exa that's exactly what you've, you're trying to get into the head of the dev and think, right, so they designed this so that if I run here, I have to be here by there. And there's a bit that I just went through where you're using the tunnels where you kind of pop in one log and you pop out the other side. Yeah. Except mm. I've reached a part where I'm where it just happened. So I pop in and out and there is nowhere else to go but the other corresponding logs or death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The first two times I did it, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And it took me a really... There's no rest. It had to become... It was like a choreographed dance with my thumb on the Xbox controller. I just had to wait and then I do this and then I go, oh my gosh, so stressful. Yeah. But I felt so accomplished by the time I got to the end and I pressed that B button and I saved the hell out of that <laughs> <laughs> it does become a bit of a puzzle solving slash dexterity <laughs> challenge game at certain points. It, it's you, you definitely need to sit back and sort of wrap your head around the best way to traverse a particular area. But then actually doing it is entirely different to having the plan in your head because the mm -hmm. control Muscle sort of memory's not there yet. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it you you definitely have a, a few replays of some of those tricky. Um, tricky jumps and, and areas that you need to traverse. It's, it's really challenging. And I appreciate that. Like I, the thing about um, platform games is that there's a lot of them out there that are just not that hard at the end of the day, but this has unique mechanics, um, different uh, methods of movement that I've not seen in a game before that make it really challenging, give you sort of ways to think about the puzzles that you don't think about in just about any other platformer. And um, yeah, it really speaks to me because of how different it is in that regard. It's great. And, you know, we haven't even unlocked all of the abilities yet. Like some of the core abilities, there's stuff that we haven't seen yet that could even turn the game on its head from this point onwards so I can't imagine and it's going any more beautiful than it already yeah it's so mm. pretty mm, yeah so uh, yeah and there are kind of boss battles in a way um, they're a bit non-traditional in the way that you, you need to think of some unique ways to, to sort of deal with them it's not always just about straight up attacking stuff um, which I guess it's not that dissimilar to, to boss battles in a lot of platform games there are some you know tricky puzzly start ones out there um but yeah, it's it's really really cool. I'm looking forward to to getting further into the story and actually seeing where it goes. It seems that uh, a lot of the uh, theme is around uh, locating three key elements that are hidden in the forest. Um, but I'm sure that the game will go somewhere after that as well. Um, seems like that's not going to be all that there is to the story. So yeah, I don't know. Can, can you guys think of any? Um... Spirit flame is adorable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> babbling on to you. <laughs> so Ollie, you mentioned you didn't no, you have a particularly. 
close. You, Ollie, you mentioned you didn't have a particularly good time oh. with the game initially, and I'm assuming that a big part of that is because just platformers are generally not your jam anyway. Um, what what were your thoughts sort of going into it for the brief amount of time you spent so far? Um, don't get me wrong. The game is gorgeous to look at. Like, I cannot fault the art direction for it. But like I said, platformers aren't really my thing. Like, I'm not a huge fan of it. I won't drop massive hours upon hours into the game in one go. I'll probably play it. Like, I will more than likely finish this game because peer pressure, again, is a thing. But it will be in, like, small little casual half-hour blocks. Like, I will try and get, like, maybe a... Actually, you guys will have to tell me this. I've only finished the first uh, chapter, The Sunken Glades. If the levels are all roughly that sort of length or maybe just a little bit longer than that, I'll probably play it in, like, chapter or level chunks. Mm. I don't know if that's a doable thing or not. Uh, but thing I I could you do. can pick up and put it down whenever you like, really. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't there's know. clear. I don't think there's clear divides between level areas as much. Um, sort of moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you start doubling back to to access um, sections that you couldn't quite access before. Mm. It's uh, certain. I think. I think one of the story devices took you back to an area you'd already visited. So yeah, it's it's not okay. so much that as uh, maybe when you gain your special abilities, like the ability to double jump. Those are defined moments. They really sort of cut up what you're able to do and where you're able to go. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's, it's worth digging a little deeper. And it would be nice if you just sort of feel like playing one day and, and happen to jump on and do some stuff because it's gorgeous and hopefully the game will call to you a little bit. Mm. I think sort of oh, yeah, how very... much time you want to use is probably a better approach. So set yourself like a couple of hours of play and, you know, see how far you get in two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting massive throwbacks to Metroid and Castlevania in that regards with the whole you have to double back later on sort of thing. And that's fine in the way that the platforming works. And again, that's fine. I have nothing, like I'm not going to go, this game is shit. Because it's not. It's a really nicely put together game. Mm. But for me, it's not something that I am going to rave to the high heavens about. Yeah. If that's the sort of thing before everyone goes, Ollie hates nice things. Why can't you like nice things? <laughs> well, I do. I'm allowed to have a different opinion to you, good sir or madam, whoever you are. But yes, the one thing I didn't like, and I'm going to make some real enemies with this one, is I didn't like the opening. It's like um, the fault with our stars going, cancer's sad, so you're going to feel sad in this movie. It's like, well, no. I want to feel sad because I am attached to these characters. And this whole thing basically goes, you're going to feel sad for this person because we need you too. It's like, well, I'd like some build-up to my sadness, please. I don't want to just feel like crap from the get-go. I had enough build-up. I was attached already. <laughs> yeah, I, was I think comparing it to The Fault in Our Stars is harsh, man. The, like, well, I, I get what you been... mean. Like, you feel... But maybe it's because we were talking about it a lot and you, you knew it was... Con- I don't know, but I felt when I saw it, I was not expecting it whatsoever. Mm. Um, and it kind of felt yeah, nice. I and was. It was and I think you, you need to understand the struggle. Otherwise, throwing yeah. yourself at the same puzzle fifteen thousand times seems pointless. <laughs> I'm going I'm to yeah, actually maybe. I'm, fine. I'm going to maybe be a little controversial here and agree with Ollie. I um. Oh rubbish! Yeah, no. The reason why is because <laughs> oh, you are wrong. Yeah, like, I, I get what they were trying you to. Have achieve. no soul. I get what they were trying to achieve. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I think it, I think it was really I think it was really touching how they opened up the story. And you know, obviously, we're trying not to spoil this by sort of saying what happens. There is a tragedy of some sort that basically opens up the tale. Um, but the reason why I thought it was a little bit out of place is because the main overarching uh, sort of story, and I guess the thing that Ori is facing throughout the rest of the tale, was only very loosely connected to the event in the beginning of the the game. Um, it was. Yeah. I disagree. Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like I totally it, disagree. It seemed like the main totally purpose yeah. of it was to demonstrate why Ollie actually started his journey, as opposed to the the real Ollie. goal of the journey. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Ori. I, <laughs> I'm now a spirit animal. That, that was the purpose. It set up. It set up the the style of the narrative. You know, a little bit surreal, supernatural. Um, the premise for for what he's going through and why, and having the narrator. Um, oh, how do I say? Maybe I won't go there because of spoilers. I think it's really well done. It's not overly lengthy, but it immediately throws you into the 
world gets you attached to the characters and gives you a real sense of purpose when you're directing those characters. I think it's wonderful. It might swing you know, back difference around. Difference of opinion. Yeah, it might it might come back around towards the story later on, maybe. Yeah, see, for mm. me it was, there's the big tragedy that happens. And, okay, spoilers, there's two tragedies, one small, one's big, relatively speaking. Like, the big overarching tragedy, that was enough. You didn't need the smaller one at the start. Like, it's very, compared to what it, so far has happened, it seemed a bit, like, unnecessary. I, that makes- I'm not, I have a belief as to its purpose, but I can't go into it because spoilers. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think, I think it was well done and I think I know why it was done and I think it was important, but maybe we'll talk about it offline. That's right. Everyone can just call <laughs> me a later. harvest prick. That's fine. I'll live. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't say it. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> no, that was Imogen. Ah, yeah, there we yeah, go. I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. No, I don't believe that, Ollie. Everyone has their own opinions, but I agree with Jamie. I think when I'm Your into this game, wrong. yeah, from the from the first, <laughs> I never said that. In the first 30 seconds, I was hooked in this game. So I knew and I was invested. So I guess in a way, I was ready sort of to be on board and to be excited and rooting for the team and the whole lot. And I think for me, I'm latching onto the story a lot more than perhaps you've had a chance or that you've had the time to do as yet. And I'm with Jamie. I think that it has a purpose and I think you will figure it will figure itself out. But um I think I think it's I think it's really well done. I think that it's it's an area where games I mean games don't start off necessarily that way. So I think it was a, a good sort of draw card. Ollie, you are a heartless prick. It's one of your best qualities, man. Don't ever change. <laughs> <laughs> no matter the cuteness of the game. Yeah, that's right. It's a nice counteractive point to that. <laughs> So we don't cute ourselves up too much. Just think about how much of a jerk Ollie is, and then we're back on level ground. Uh, no, um, yeah, I'll very, very cool. Then. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I don't know how many hours it's going to take to get through overall. I think I'm probably about six in now, maybe seven, six, seven hours. And I, I, at a guess, I think maybe it's going to be about double that or, or more. So. Um, There's a percentage. Uh, percentage. I think, Complete, oh God, yeah. last time I looked, I was around 30%, I think, but I could be wrong. You get percentages for different areas. Those? Yeah, it's, it's not an overall percentage. It's for individual areas of the map, oh, I, I believe. Oh, I thought there was. Yeah. Oh. I, I could be in wrong. The, in the pause menu. I think there is in the pause menu. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Mm. There you go. No, but, I have um, to check that out again. Could be wrong. Hmm. I'll check it out tonight after we're all done. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest are by Moon Studios. You uh, should check it out. Very, very cool game. Highly recommended. Just won the Arts uh, Direction Award at the Video Game Awards. Um, so, yeah, that's a pretty good accolade, I think. Um, all right, well, we should probably wrap it up now because uh, it's stupid o'clock for Imogen over on the east coast of the country and uh, you actually need to get I some sleep. I have to wake up in five hours. Yeah. <laughs> You're not skilled at the zombie nah. thing? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, coffee's a real thing. Coffee's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to get any gaming in at all uh, while you're over there? Have you got anything uh, sort of on mobile that you're going to be cracking out or are you looking to get back and um, <laughs> get back into reality after the weekend? I'm highly committed to my crew of ragtag pixel monsters in You Must Build a Boat. <laughs> so I feel like I might do that. And then I'm going to actually um, explore the App Store for, for a new... Uh, interesting title to challenge uh, myself because I am away for the remainder of the week. So, can I make a recommendation? I think you should uh, check don't out. Don't make it be a puzzle one. Can't be bothered. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I was going to recommend you a puzzle one, but it's one that's actually very highly acclaimed and just gone free. So, check out Monument Valley if you get a chance. Monument Valley. Yeah. Okay. If yeah. I hate it, can I be as heartless as as Ollie? Uh, I nearly called you Ori. Yeah. <laughs> if you hate it. <laughs> If you hate it, I don't think it's a massively long one. I think it's only a few hours, so it won't be be as big a commitment as some of the other stuff we've done recently. Okay. Yeah. And it's free, so, you know, cool. Bonus. (laughs) All right, well, um, until next time, you can uh, catch us on uh, the emails, of course. So send your email through to mail at uh, partyloaded.com. We are on Twitter at Party Loaded Show. Uh, Please hop onto Facebook and find us as well. Um, Go to facebook.com slash Party Loaded. And, uh, of course, at our main site at partyloaded.com. And we will be recording again in a week's time. 
uh, with new, wonderful, exciting games to talk about. And uh, Imogen may even have an Xbox by then, so maybe we'll have some stuff to <laughs> cover on we that. We can only hope. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Well, uh, any closing goals for this week? Everyone uh, looking forward to the uh, last week before we all Star Wars ourselves crazy? It's coming that's up. what I'm, I'm looking play some forward Star Wars. to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's it. You, Ollie, you can pace yourself on the Star Wars that you've already got, I suppose. So. <laughs> nice. All right, well, I don't know if I've got anything in particular that I'm going to play. I just see yeah, how it goes. Ori. Yeah. We, yeah. Should, we should heroes um, of the storm it up a little bit while uh, Imogen's away, Jamie. We yeah. need to catch up some levels. True. It's true. No, oh, not fair. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, we'll catch you next time. Bye. 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 The Party Loaded Podcast is a Channel Endgame production. For this and more great gaming content, bookmark channelendgame.com.